I think there was like a very interesting trend that because like right now I'm started actually I'm started to listen to like a lot of old artists like Fiona Apple mm-hmm. and uh, Marvin Gaye is like because I'm a huge pop fan like at the weekend and then Drake and Rihanna and stuff but like right now I started to listen to all these um already established artists and then like listen to their entire album because you can kind of see how they like like how they change and then how they like um change their career and then their style of album because you can see it's a it's a journey the longevity of it and then I just really start to like enjoying hearing like oh music and stuff yeah, because also, back in the day, artists make records. They're very thoughtful about, even if you're working with an A&R guy, it's that journey of how you tell your story, right? An entire, it's like writing a book within 10 songs. And then right now, I feel like most of the artists that came, they came out was like singles, not actual albums. Yeah, they're they all singles. So it's not, yeah, you yeah. don't get the complete picture of an artist. And also, I do feel like, well, this is my opinion. I do like people, especially like people in our 20s are kind of like getting tired of only singles and only like bop on TikTok. Cause like, mm-hmm. remember the song like Kay Bush, Running Up the Hills, that one is like got hit on internet. And then like a lot of people of my generation started to listen to Kay Bush, but it was like a, it was like a 1990s song, mm-hmm. but it just like hit. I feel like it just hit those different when it came into this generation that people started to kind of like go back to discover in the archive mm-hmm. of the music. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I mean, there's a lot of these, you know, comebacks, right? Like with all of these, these old artists because their songs somehow got used in movies or television. And then all of a sudden these kids are singing songs like my son is, is singing songs that are like, how would you even know what these songs are? You were like, before you were even a, mm-hmm. uh, a consideration in my brain like you know these songs that i was listening to at your age you know just like how did that happen and um you know and and it's and it's i mean i guess in a good way they're learning a lot of things too that and having access to what we listen to so it's almost like there there's not that big of a gap like for example like if i were to listen to what i listen to just thinking about like you know how there's a generational gap where parents will think that whatever music we listen to is just either too loud or too noisy and they don't get it but i think because we have access to so much stuff now i think the positive is that that generational gap is a little bit shorter right like what i listen to my son listen it's like something i would listen to and then he's kind of discovering some of the songs that we grew up listening to yet he didn't realize he doesn't realize it until i tell him that oh those are the songs i was listening to you know in that positive way it's it's almost like we can listen to everything together and it won't be a fight i remember i like you know like car rides i can't listen to any of the music that i wanted to listen to because my parents would think that's too loud they only wanted to listen to what they wanted to listen to because it was my dad driving and not I. <laughs> I was like talking to one of my professors. She's like in her 50s. And it's so interesting. I was like, have you ever listened to Pink Floyd? And she was like, yes. And then she was like, I'm listening to Olivia Rodrigo. I was like, I'm listening to Pink Floyd. <laughs> it's like <laughs> interesting, like generation change. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I think that's a good thing, right? I think that's a good thing. I mean, you know, like also like, you know, discovery of classical music, unfortunately, is the same is the same composer in the last hundreds of years. And people are still playing the same pieces of music. And and the sad part is, you know, because the repertoires don't change, it's the artist that changes. Are there more opportunities for new artists to be discovered through this current technology and how music is being received versus you know, back in the days where you need to go into a recording studio and just have an entire album being recorded. I think it's all like connections, no? It's who, uh, if you get pushed into the spotlight at the right time, at the right moment by the right people, then you'll get seen by quite a number of people in the public. Otherwise, you kind of have to work your way up, start out on the local scene, try to get heard by people or spread it online. Otherwise, like, it's tough. I think as a classical musician, 
it's easy. Well, I was just thinking as any any type of music, really, right? Well, I think look the. I mean, taking pop music aside, I think in terms of classical music, because the the classical music, the the, the repertoire, the canon of that repertoire and the library of what people play are not original, unless you're a composer yourself and you're composing new music, right? But aside from that, it's not the other side of the world where re- you're you're writing new songs. Here, you're not writing new songs. Here, you are playing the same pieces that your predecessors played fifty, sixty, a hundred years ago. Right by those composers. So my my question, I guess, is that because of the advancements of, of like you know YouTube, social media, is it much easier for for a younger classical artist to be heard with you know of their music playing that same tune, right? Like now, as if as supposed, you know, as opposed to like pre all of this. I mean, taking for example, there was this piano. I think she's Singaporean. Winnie Poon, Winnie something, and she was doing a lot of recording. I remember this was already like six, seven years ago. She's been added doing a, a YouTube channel and recording herself and presenting classical music, and. Because of that,、um, after all these years, now I see she's playing in major festivals and concert halls and playing concertos with all of these, you know, all of these major orchestras. And I was like, oh my god, you just started out as a YouTube kid, right? Whereas, like, I don't think those kind of opportunities would even happen back in my days. So Tiffany Poon. That's it, Tiffany Poon. I'm like Winnie. Yeah. Oh, Tiffany. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Tiffany. So like, when I first saw her, I was like, oh. You're a good pianist, but like I think it's because how she presented her content, right? Like she was really. I remember like one of the very first videos I saw of her. This I have to say, this is this is definitely close to ten years ago. Okay, I'm talking about like close to ten years ago. One of her first videos I saw of her, she was just trying to explain her frustrations of playing through one of these sonatas, and she played it, and so almost like she's practicing in front of the audience, like the viewers. But just kind of showing the struggles that she was going through, and it was very just very organic, and I thought she, and you know and she played well. But I think that's also like, you know, I don't think it's a combination of look. I think it's just her sincerity, her originality, and also the foundation that she was a good player. I'm using her as an example because she doesn't continue to live in this YouTube world. Now she's also been taken seriously as a classical musician. Because now she's on she's she's on stage at these major venues, playing with major orchestras, which is quite rare. I think you know, out of all of the millions, I'm sure hundreds and thousands of classical artists are trying to do the same thing online. Yet it doesn't translate, right? It doesn't. That currency doesn't convert into what they may or may not want it to be. So that was one of the examples I was talking about. Like she was able to. Move beyond just being a YouTube star, like a YouTuber, and I'm not sure. I can't think of anyone else that's kind of doing that. I mean, you know, Ray Chen is already a very well-established young artist, and he kind of went backwards, right? Like he went backwards, and and is sort of like these young hip classical. You know, he was recognized as a classical artist and not a YouTuber. Whereas Tiffany is the opposite. Tiffany was discovered on YouTube. If that makes any sense. I mean, like I think that the whole concept of things that she does are, is kind of good, but on the other hand, like everything seems very clickbaity. And I remember I saw a video one time where she was like, "I like the caption. I think was something like, 'I'm so done with Juilliard,' or 'I am leaving Juilliard,' or something like that." And I'm like, "Oh my goodness, what happened at Juilliard?" I click on it. She's like, "I just graduated from Juilliard." And now I'm moving on to my studies in England, and I'm like, well, this is a pile of horse crap. <laughs> this is what I clicked on, you know. And I feel like, you know, like it's just like YouTube in general, really. Like, you know, people making、uh, absurd headlines to catch heads, and then going from there.、Uh, I mean, there's like some. I saw that some people were kind of annoyed at Two Set, like recently, because they were like contemporary music. Like they had like a video where like it was like contemporary music is so bad. Like who wants to play this or something like that as the title. And people got really annoyed because you know, a lot of people are really into that kind of stuff.、Um, her playing is quite good.、Um, whether you agree with what she does in the pieces that she plays, it's a, it's another story. But you know, 
the foundations are obviously, you know, very, are there and uh, the skills are there. So the fact that she was picked up as a concert artist is good, meaning that there's faith for people that want to put themselves out on YouTube. But like you said, it was 10 years ago, right? So I feel like mm -hmm. if someone tried doing that right now, it'd be a little bit more tricky because more people are putting out content like that. Uh, I personally don't think that she was discovered purely through YouTube. I do think she has all the right connections in real life as well. And she was in the competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like she does things like, you know, in real life too. So like I feel like another person, like if they put out the same type of content and did the same things just purely on YouTube, they might not get the same opportunities because they don't know the same people in real life. Hmm. Right. So exactly. So what I'm saying is that, yeah, I mean, I don't know what else she does. I just, I only know her through that little screen. Right. And so to me, and it's obvious, like she, she's putting hard work too, and not just solely based on that. So yeah, it makes sense. And so in a way is it, I think it's a very strategically, that was very smart on her move that she is not relying solely on YouTube to make a fame, a career for herself. Like she understood then that you needed the other things as well. But the comp this kind of medium was only a way to was was an was an added on value for pe for more people to get to know her. Absolutely. I agree with that. Right. And so, also the, the so, idea that YouTube was temporary, yeah. you know. So meaning like he, she knew that like I'm, at least I'm assuming, right? That the YouTube uh I don't want to say face, but YouTube face, like, you know, you can't make a, at least I don't think you can make like a permanent uh, career out of it, like for the rest of your life, you know, you can use it as a platform to bounce yourself up, which is exactly what she did. So good for her. Looking at all these YouTubers, like, I'm not even talking in the, in, in the music world, right? Just in general, like, uh, I don't know. I'm just thinking like people that have been around since forever, like Shane Dawson, does he still make stuff? Like him and a bunch of other like old YouTubers that have been around for like 20 years now. Like, you know, you could tell that they're reaching right now because they don't know what else to make, right? It's their career. So I mean, Shane Dawson was exposed for being like a well, predator and well, stuff. Well, that's another thing, but I'm just thinking of people that were been, you know, around for a long time because I remember that he was around a long time ago. Mm. I don't know. I don't know who else does that, uh, who's been around forever on YouTube because I mean, a lot of YouTubers I used to watch growing up have moved on right mm -hmm. yeah yeah so you know like in terms of digesting those kind of music it's um you know it's i mean music is music right and then we can start tearing artists upside down for how they interpret a certain chopin attitude or some or certain angero is that a disservice or not right when no one can tell the difference and and is that now relying on these you know so again on the or on the flip side is it are there more visibility on that plane? Ver like the, your popularity outshines how poorly you play because of these kind of new mediums. That's a mixed bag. I feel like it could go either way. Because you have like videos of like professional pianists or like people who are playing some ridiculously crazy pieces at a very high level and they butcher some passage and you have like all these like, you know, uh, all the all the adjudicators in the comments that are just like oh like you know this was not very well done and then you have videos of people like playing some rather easy stuff and people going like oh my goodness you're so talented so i mean it depends whether people online or want to feel like haters or not i don't know what do you guys think i'm thinking about like a good example is like i'm talking about taylor swift right now um so her new albums came out and then just because she already had this like great branding, but like the new album is not it. But like, because of people used to listen to her albums and all the music and right now it came out, this album that a lot of people, it's a little controversial, but also because if she's Taylor Swift, that people think, oh, it's acceptable. I feel like this kind of situation only exists for like an already very established artist that he or she or have already have their branding and stuff. That if like all of a sudden they pull out like a really bad or not that okay music that people will still listen to it but if you're a nobody then it kind of just like it's like one of a million music and on the internet that nobody pay attention to was it really that bad it's like not it's not bad but 
it's just like okay I don't know how recent this song was, but there's like one song she put out in the last couple of years, and the first lyric is like "cat eye sharp enough to kill a man" or something. I was like, this is so cringy. Why is anyone listening to like listening to this? Because I feel like artists do have their up and downs in their career, and you can actually tell, especially like for existing, like still like going on artists like Billie Eilish and stuff. You can tell they have like their Boppin, um, what do you call it? What is boppin pop? It's a bop or it's a what is the other word for that? Flop. Yeah, boppin pop. <laughs> I'm learning all new terms. My God, I'm old. Yeah, I mean, look, like even Taylor Swift, like a recent song that I listened to her, I'm like, how is this not original? You just ripped off one of your older songs. I can't even remember the song title, and this is again like my thing. It's like I can't even remember song titles anymore because it's all mixed with everything else. And because I'm such a visual person, when I can't even see the thing in front of my face, I will not remember that because I'm just listening to it over Spotify or whatever or the radio or whatever streaming online. And so you're not going to pay attention to the details of what that song's name is. And so I'm just going to say, okay, I just know Taylor Swift. But I don't know the of the name of the song because I didn't actually see the song name on a piece of paper. And also, like I feel like people nowadays have like a short, very short expense of attention. Like they only yeah. focus on content that's like fifteen seconds. So like it's so sad because I'm thinking about like Steve Lace that he only got one bop. It's like I wish I knew. And then people like came to his concert only knowing that two lyrics, but they don't even know the rest of the song because that's only two lyrics. Lyrics got like popular and viral on TikTok and that's all they know so I think it's kind of sad yeah a lot of artists are making songs now where there's like one part of the song that's really good and they know it's going to be popular and viral and then the rest of the song is like really uninteresting um but yeah it's just for the sake of going viral I feel like it's kind of like a strategy of like also like, I noticed that nowadays like artists they don't do like a traditional trailer or spoiler. They just put the highlight of their song on their social media and mm. then like put a link, like pre-save my singles so that like, you know, it's going to be OK. You know, it's going to be like only for the two seconds of the whole album. And then it's kind of like a clickbait to the entire albums. Right. Yeah. Like, I mean, the thing is, is like, you know, since I moved, I have no CD player. Right, like, and not you know, I remember my old laptop, lap, laptop before I converted to a Mac, an Apple had a CD player. But since I switched out of my CD, my computer, I no longer have a CD player. And was, and and also moving here, I just didn't ever bought a CD player, and they don't sell CD players anymore. So like now, I'm just thinking about what's going to happen to my 2000, my collection of 2000 CDs that's sitting in storage. Maybe you should go through them and see if any of them have collector value. I don't know. Start selling them. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't know if I have the patience to even do that. But but that's the thing for me. That's, a, a, you know, it's it's more than nostalgia, right? Like that, that process of like, you know, opening a CD, taking it out of its, its, its plastic film and 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 getting your hands stuck with all of this little stickers that's on the side of the binder of of the CD. It's like it's it's just that you, in a way, I, I kind of miss that, you know. And 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 that process of of that extra little steps to get to you to opening that and popping it into your your player and listening to it is just. You miss out that uh, uh you know again for me it's like you miss out the enjoyment and appreciation of the artist and the music. You know, I compare it to like quick fashion, right? We buy quick fashion because it's cheap and we don't care if we only wear it once or twice and we just throw it away. So there's no loyalty at all and there's no understanding and appreciation for this designer's work because it's just quick. It's designed by a group of people that could be bad and the quality may not be good, but you're okay with it because it's cheap and I can only afford cheap. And then if I throw it out after two washes, I'm, I'm fine, I just move on to the next. You know, versus sort of the higher end where I'm buying a piece of clothes and I'm appreciating, I'm appreciating this piece of clothes 
and I wear it and I take good care of it and I know I can have it for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And and that's not going to go out of fashion. 